Well, I'm on the farm today and uh, waiting on a hay customer to come. And uh, I want to talk about the hardest part of starting a hay farm. Walk in here to the barn a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, uh, it's when you when you start a hay farm, uh, it can be uh, right financially challenging, and uh, you know we we've been very fortunate that uh, I have a higher paying job day job being a hot shot engineer, and I'm older too and that when it came time to invest in barns and equipment uh you know i had money set aside uh to take care of these these kind of purchases uh, but we did start out with older equipment you know we had to build up our wagons from running gear we had to find those things there's some right there i need to work on this winter uh over in the weeds is a hay rake and there's a new holland 68 a baler around here some somewhere and uh, we bought all that stuff on the cheap and that kind of helped us get started and while we got some decent tractors we still got the old massey ferguson 50 you know it's 60 years old i think 59 maybe as you saw in my other video i just picked up this old sprayer we still have old equipment up here to make things affordable and uh you know, I built this barn uh, a few years ago. That was a necessity. In many ways, our fields looked like this, full of stickweed and trash. So we had some we had some locals that were cutting hay off our farm. Uh, we had uh, gotten rid of the cattle, and uh, in a lot of ways kind of got out of farming to the extent that we weren't actually doing it and uh and then at some point you know the people that would come and cut the hay they wouldn't put anything back and then you know people's equipment is bigger and bigger and they don't want to haul it up and down the road and uh at some point uh we couldn't get anybody to cut this grass and that's when i told my dad and my kids were much much younger and i said uh why don't i buy the hay equipment again and uh, we'll make hay and sell it. We won't bring cattle back onto the farm to feed it. We'll just make hay and sell it. And so I had to put a lot of lime and fertilizer on these fields. You know, it was mined out. The people would cut hay and they wouldn't put anything back in. And uh, so the fields were in really, really bad shape. It took several years uh, to get them somewhat whipped into shape. And uh, they're pretty good now, but it's still a continuous maintenance item. So in, in, in many ways, you know, the buying the old equipment and fixing it up so it'll run, uh, you know, working hard so you can buy newer equipment, uh, in, increasing your yields by uh, bringing your fields up to snuff, building barns, you know, things like that. Uh, none of that stuff was terribly hard. Uh, I mean, it's easy to spend money. Uh, but, and there was some pain and knuckle busting. You know, anytime you work on a piece of rusty equipment, there's going to be some knuckle busting. The hardest part of starting a hay farm, or in our case, uh, kind of repurposing our farm to be a hay farm and uh, be active. The hardest part of producing hay for sale is not the equipment, the barn, the knuckle busting repairs. The hardest part, believe it or not, is finding somebody to buy the hay. And, you know, that might sound odd, but it's true because <clears throat> why should... You know, why should a horse customer throw down the supplier they got and come get your hay? And in our case, our price was going to be higher because, you know, the quality of our hay is just really good most of the time. And, uh, but, uh, 
you know, why would somebody drive, you know, across mountains uh, to our farm, you know, 45 minutes to an hour when they got hay local to where they're at? And uh, so for us, we found the, the hardest part of uh, selling hay, that part of the farm business, to be the hardest part. And so, you know, we kind of started out uh, making kind of trashy hay, and we had really low prices to move it out. And people would come for the, at that point, people would come for the price. And then later on, uh, we kind of whipped our fields in shape, and uh, everything was well managed, and we had good uh, forage-tested hay for uh, particularly horse customers. And uh, so one by one, they started coming. But it's taken years to establish, uh, you know, repeat customers and to build our reputation as a dependable quality uh, hay supplier. And, you know, when you're starting out, uh, the expenses are heavy. And, um, but in order to entice some of these customers, what we had to do was, uh, even on our, you know, premium hay, we had to lower the price to get people to come in. And, and we drew them in, and out of that lot, uh, we found ourselves with, uh, I don't know, multiple types of customers. I don't want to put a number on it. But uh, we had uh, customers that were in some ways original to the farm. But uh, they'd come a year or two, and then they were done. And then we had customers that were... Uh, then we have customers that are loyal customers. They come year in and year out. And they understand the ups and downs of making quality hay. I mean, anybody can make a barn full of trash hay. And uh, and then you have, of course, the one-and-done customers. And uh, so on our pricing, we have uh, steadily increased our price to get it to a place where it pencils out. And again, our loyal customers, they completely understand that. Some of our original customers, if you will, for lack of a better word, um, they don't understand, and they, you know, they'll say things like, and this is the one and done, too, they'll say it's not worth that, and they'll move on and buy hay from, you know, wherever, which is fine. And uh, so what we do uh, to try to uh, keep our loyal customers happy, aside from making you know, really good hay, is I'll give them uh, some discount on the hay for coming back. If you come year over year, you know, I'm not going to hit you with the full price. And our price fluctuates with the quality of the hay and the market conditions. So if you're a repeat customer, the only price fluctuation you're going to see is... Uh, the quality of the hay. So our hay's not as good this year, so we've lowered the price a little bit uh, to, you know, move this hay out. Uh, last year, everything was perfect and the price was higher. Now, in a year where there's a drought and the hay uh, stocks are very, very tight, uh, our hay price will go up regardless of the quality because, uh, and, and this, uh, this impacts the one and done customers. And maybe it costs us some repeat business. But the bottom line is, um, the majority of those, in my opinion, they're just shopping hay. And if there's a drought and they're coming uh, to this farm instead of buying hay closer to home, it's because there's not any hay. And, uh, and then next year, you know, they won't be here. They'll be buying hay local. So why would I, you know, why would I give those people a discount uh, so, you know, I hit them with a, uh, a higher price, a market driven price and, uh, but our loyal customers, you know, I'll hold the line on price for them. And, uh, you know, it's kind of the way we do business here, but, uh, <clears throat> you know, you can't make everybody happy with square bales of hay. And, you know, we've got some really good horse customers. I mean, the most of our customers are really, 
our horse customers are real just excellent uh we got a few that uh they're kind of a piece of work and uh and a lot of times the one and dones are kind of a piece of work and uh sometimes they're real nice but uh penetrating that hay market and selling you know a lot of hay has been uh, a challenge and it's more so for us because you know we're out here in these mountains a long ways from anybody else so you know I kind of made this video uh, if you're starting a hay farm hay for sale square bales and you can imagine just as an aside uh, there's so many round bales around here I don't know what it's like where you're at but it's like 90 probably 95 to 98 percent of the hay uh, up and down the road here and pretty much everywhere I go is round bales so you can imagine if it's competitive in square bales if it's competitive in square bales round bales will be even more competitive but uh, you know uh, penetrating that market you know if you're starting a new hay farm uh, you got to find a way to carve out a niche uh, such that your hay is good and quality and not just uh, you know weedy trash you know that you bale up and uh, I've talked about gleaner hay you know we will go around and we'll bale up some more weedy grass around the perimeters of our field and uh, we're thinking about abandoning that uh, it pays for some diesel but uh, my concern is it also establishes some reputation amongst some customers, even if the price is really low. You know, what's the hay like on that guy's farm? Well, you know, he sold us a bale full of stickweeds when, you know, they agreed to come and buy it at a really low price. But, uh, so I would just say, Again, I know this video is getting kind of long, but uh, the hardest part of uh, getting a hay business started is finding the customer. <clears throat> and uh, But uh, we're kind of going along here pretty good now, and uh, but it's taken a number of years to kind of get us where we're at. And uh, so just thought I'd share that thought with you, and... Uh, We'll talk to you later.